Hey everyone, I hope that you're enjoying your Zero Summit 2020. My name is Pablo Muñoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist, and I've been using Zero for a little over 10 years now. And in the past few years, it has become an essential tool that I use on a daily basis. So today I have a pretty cool tip for you on how to use the NPR filters and the BPR renders within Zero to create something that, that looks a bit more appealing and more interesting than just the, the simple BPR. So this creature that I have here, this creepy crawler here, um, this is a simple BPR. If I click on the canvas, you see, I just get out of that, that render mode. So I'm going to go ahead and click on BPR once more, just to, sh to show you the difference between uh, the fast preview, which is what I have here, and the BPR uh, without any settings change or anything like that. All right. So I'm going to show you uh, roughly how to go from this to, let me go ahead and load one of my custom filters. This one, um, the wildlife cam night, right? So this is just a series of settings and BPR filters that you can basically load or you know customize the way that you want to save it. And as you can see, it's just a matter of loading that. And as soon as I rotate around, obviously I'm, I'm out of that series of filters, but I can go ahead and do another BPR render. Sirius is going to do that BPR render and apply those filters to create that sort of creepy look of a, you know, almost like if this creature got caught on camera in the middle of the night. Um, and that's the, that's the effect that I'm going for and what I want to show you. And Really, it's, I'm going to walk you through how I build this and how I set it up. Uh, but hopefully the takeaway is that you can use these filters and use these settings that I'm going to show you to, to build any type of NPR filter and, and customize it the way that you want to. So um, the first kind of like tip that I can give you is once you have loaded these, these filters, you can obviously select every filter right here. By the way, I'm in the render palette, BPR sub palette, right? Uh, whoops, let's go ahead and do that. Um, so you can reset those filters, right? You can just select it or select the, the filter that you, that you want, reset the filter and start doing all of that, right? Turn them all off. Uh, but it's becoming a little bit tedious once you have a lot of filters and you have up to up to 12. So the easiest thing is to click on the Lightbox filter. This, all of these filters come with ZBrush, uh, but there is this one that is pretty simple, the default one. If you click on that, it basically loads a default setting for the filter. So um, now everything is reset back to normal. So if I do a BPR, this is what we got, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and find a, a better camera angle so that you can see more of the, you know, the, the interesting creature, really. All right, I'm going to do a one more BPR. Um, depending on, you know, what are the settings in terms of the, the shadows and how many rays you have and all of that, it might change uh, and it might take a, a bit longer than than what I just did here, but these are pretty much the settings, uh, the simple settings. Once you have that, it's just a matter of starting building the the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one, and you'll notice this little dot here that is just to activate them or not. So I can select them like so, and it just shows that whatever is yellow or highlighted, that's the one that you have selected. But to enable it, you have to click on that dot. So now I have enabled the first one, and here it tells you which type of filter it is. So this is just a noise filter, and I'm going to start with that. I'm going to increase this to 100 so you can see fully the effect of the filter. Uh, but now I can just reduce that. Just want to do a bit of grain, not too much. And I can turn this on and off so you can see the difference. It's pretty subtle. But we have 12 filters to add more subtleties and, and build this, um, this filter. The next one that I'm going to use, I'm going to enable that. Um, by default, it's a blur filter. But I'm going to change this to be a green filter, for example, or um, actually let's use a overlay image, right? And that's one of the great things about this filter stuff. I'm going to click on this filter and you have all of these ones to choose from. I'm going to go to texture overlay, which obviously, as the name suggests, is going to overlay a texture and you can import any texture that you want. So I have imported some textures already, these two here. And what I can do is click on this thumbnail of the texture thumbnail within this filter. And I'm going to select texture 45. Right, and the texture overlay, this value here determines the the scale of the texture. So right now I'm scaling it. Uh, I'm reducing the scale. I'm just tiling it almost like 50 times. So I'm going to reduce this to something like eight. And this texture that I chose is a black and white image, as you can see here in this preview, uh, that has one of those you know those particles and floating dust that will get caught on that camera at night probably. But that's all it is. And because Zbrush, um, you can tell Zbrush to interpret the black color as transparent. However, in this case, the filter itself has a blending mode of overlay. So if I change the overlay to, let's say, add, you will see a little bit more of the, of the color. Uh, we can change this to multiply. 
and it's obviously going to multiply the entire image on top of what you have here. So I think overlay is just fine, right? And you can control the colors as well here. So if I click on the front color, I can make it green and the back color, I can make it blue. And it's just gonna give me this effect because I'm overlaying these two colors, but let's keep it simple, go to black. And in fact, let's just give this a tiny little bit of a green tint because that's what we are heading towards. So it all helps. So now I have two filters, right? A grain or noise as, as a general rule. And I have this filter. Now, before I move on to the, the next ones, I just want to talk about these settings here. Uh, on the left hand side, you can basically grab the, um, the render settings that you, that you use. So in a way, if you have a mask, let me just show you in the render passes here because I rendered a mask and these are rendered by default, right? Because I render a mask, then I have the ability to limit this filter to the mask. So if I set this to one, now these particles are just focusing on the character. If I set it to minus one, it's, it's focusing on the background. So I can set these particles to be just in the background and then have another image, for example, another filter that goes on top. So I'm gonna set this to zero and I'm gonna use the Fresnel effect. And the Fresnel effect is basically pushing things, pushing the effect towards the glazing angles or vice versa to like 90 degrees in front of the camera. So if I do this like minus one, right? I'm sort of like avoiding certain angles. And if I do it to one, I'm just placing it. It's very similar at the moment, <laughs> um, like the mask, but I'm just gonna add a bit. All of this is just about subtle, about subtlety, so I'm just gonna add a bit of value there. So I have these two filters. I'm gonna go ahead and add another one. This one is going to be a green filter, for example, or paint. So we can select something like paint, choose the color that we want. So I'm gonna go for a green tone uh, to generate that sort of you know, night uh, vision type of thing. And I'm gonna set the blending mode to, let's go for overlay as well, right? So this one is controlling that tint overall. Right, which is pretty cool. Um, can increase the, the amount of paint a little bit and then reduce the opacity. Maybe give it a tiny bit of uh, bluish tint, not so green, All right? Then the fourth, the fourth one, um, this is the one that I'm gonna use to fade the character kind of like into, into the background really. So I'm gonna click on the filter tab and we have a couple ones that we can use. We can use paint, uh, but we can also use fade. So if I click on fade, uh, if I set it to 100, I'm basically fading the entire render so we don't see anything. But we can start playing around with, uh, you know, the, the settings of the filter. So again, we can set it to the mask. So I'm fading just the character or fading just the background. So I'm going to do a bit of fading for the background, actually. Something like that. And then reduce the fade. So it's just a tiny bit. Again, all of these things is very subtle, but you see the dark uh, values get, you know, a bit more on the on the grayscale, really. All right, and then I'm gonna add another one. This time I'm gonna use the paint again. So let's click on filter, paint, and this time I'm gonna set it to be a dark color or a black color. And I'm gonna set it to overlay, right? So now I'm overlaying this black color over everything, but because we, as I mentioned before, uh, by default, you get this shadow pass, depth pass, the mask pass, and the shaded version. So I'm gonna use this depth pass, which is um, hopefully you can see here in the thumbnail at the bottom. And what this map, basically what it does is whatever is closer to the camera is gonna be on, you know, closer to the white color. Everything is that is further from the camera is gonna be black. So I'm gonna use that. Um, and the way that I use that is from this depth thing here. Right, so I'm gonna set this depth A to zero and depth B to zero. Um, these ones are just to change the, the range of those values, but setting this to zero is a, a pretty good starting point. So I'm gonna set the depth to other than something other than zero. And hopefully you can see how I'm starting to fade the background and the character is sort of like coming uh, closer to the camera. And all of these settings here on the right hand side are essentially to add or increment the, um, the effect of the filter. So I can take this depth exponent and just push it further, basically to contrast that a bit. And now that I know exactly what the effect is doing, I'm obviously losing a lot of the background and those particles, I can go back to the opacity and I can reduce this a little bit so I can grab some of that background noise, right? 
And we're pretty close to finish this up. So let's add another filter. This time I'm going to add a texture overlay, right? And I'm going to add the same texture, right? So I'm overlaying this, but this time I'm going to reduce the size a bit more. And the, the idea here is to generate some particles that are probably closer to the camera. I'm going to add a tint as well, not too much. Reduce the opacity of this and maybe increase this a bit more, right? And if you click on the modifiers of this texture overlay, uh, you can actually rotate the, the texture around. So it, it allows you to change things quite a bit. And finally, just to wrap it up, uh, as you can see, this is a, a big change from a simple BPR. Uh, I'm going to add a new filter. And this one is going to be either user uh, contrast user color, contrast auto color, or contrast auto gray. I like the auto color, right? It just gives me a, a very strong um, contrast between the darks and the and the highlights. And I can just modify the the opacity and obviously the contrast itself. But there you have it, a pretty simple tip. Uh, hopefully you have found this useful. I would encourage you to really dig in into these NPR filters. There's a lot of things that you can do with it and and enhance your renders all within ZBrush with you know, just a matter of, of changing those settings. And the great thing about this is that as soon as you change your camera angle, obviously you get out of that NPR filter, but all you have to do is click on that um, PPR button and wait for the render to happen. All the filters and everything else, all the settings will be applied on the new uh, set of maps that are generated. And you have a, another render with all of those settings all within ZBrush. All right, I'm gonna leave it here. Enjoy the rest of your summit.